he took it serious. Like, the scenes didn't let us relax or think the season was over or that was our Super Bowl. We knew we were going to a bowl, but we just really, we didn't really care where. We were just so excited to get to a bowl. Jeff is by far the most athletic person I've ever played with, by far. That was pretty cool to see uh, Richard break the record. So he's a special talent, man, a special talent. And welcome to another Big Ten video recall. Kevin Kugler alongside former Illinois quarterback Juice Williams. And we are going today take a look at Illinois football circa 2007. Of course, if you're an Illinois fan, you know that was a big year for Illinois. Made their first Rose Bowl since 1984. Had the chance to knock off a number one team. They did it against Ohio State. First win since 1956 against the number one team. And Juice, this had to have been an awfully special season for you and your teammates. It was. It was a good time, um, you know, especially going into senior day for those for those guys. So for for Jay Lehman and uh, Kevin Mitchell and Justin Harrison, all those guys who were leaving, coming off that Ohio State win the week before um, was like such a cool feeling. So you know, taking that momentum, going into Northwestern, who was our arch rival, like you know, that's that's always the game for us, right? So so it was pretty cool game plan and prepping it for that week coming off a big win at Ohio State. Well, as Juice alluded to, we're going to look back at that Northwestern game from 2007 as Jay Lehman's met by his family out on the field. It was senior day in Champaign, great crowd on hand, and what looked like a perfect day to close. I mean, Jay's out there in short sleeves, not that he wouldn't have been anyway, but he's out there in short sleeves. So are you. So is Richard Mendenhall. Nice day for late November. Not bad. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and during that time, I mean, you, 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 you can't wait to put the short sleeves on this 45 degrees. So you'll take that in December. So. Well, this, this team, as you mentioned, coming off, and there's a look at the weather, it is indeed perfect. But this team coming off that win against Ohio State. And as we get started looking at these offensive plays, we're going to look at a lot of offensive series from this game. Before we get started with this juice, what was the mindset of this group coming into this? You had just pulled off that win against Ohio State. First time you'd ever in the history of Illinois football beaten a number one team on the road. How did you deal with all of the excitement and hype coming out of that and not get too, I guess you could say, lax for a lack of a better word against Northwestern? Yeah, so we had a 24-hour rule that we kept in place even after beating the number one team. So good, we come out and get a big win, you celebrate for 24 hours, we come out and lose. You down about it for 24 hours and it's right back to business on Sunday. So we kept the same approach. Although, you know, that was a bit sweeter being the number one team. You took maybe, you know, that 24 hour might have went 27 hours, right? But it was right <laughs> back to business on, on Sunday night. And I remember us going into those team meetings and preparing for that week. And it was, you know, here's what Northwestern does. Here's our opportunities. Here's the key players we need to look out for. So it's, it's, it's the same sort of, you know, prep and plan it, and we took it serious, right? The seniors didn't let us relax or think the season was over or that was our Super Bowl. You know, we kept it going. So, and obviously that translated to another win um, against Northwestern. Well, let's get started with this one and look back at this game and see how it unfolded. As you mentioned, one of your rivals, and we see you right away going around the outside using your wheels to get the first down. And this was something, especially in this first half, that we saw a ton but if you're an Illinois fan right there, you're watching this play and you're watching Juice Williams get up after play one and you're limping a little bit. How bad was this? Yeah, so earlier that season, I sprained my uh, my MCL um, against Wisconsin. So I had a knee brace on all, all for the rest of the season. And that was like one of those weird like tweaks and I almost didn't get up. So, But we see back-to-back -back first down runs for Juice Williams. At one point late in the first half, I think you had seven first down runs in this game do you remember going into this game the game plan was you could attack them with your feet and of course use Richard Mendenhall as well yeah so the the, the offense we ran was weird it was not weird but it was different in terms of like you have an idea what the defense might do but everything is reads right so until the day comes and you actually go through it like you don't know what to expect right Precisely with this one play. So this was so this was one of those plays where we actually schemed up. We knew if we ran, we was effective with the run, run of football early in the game. This will open up. We wanted to get the safeties to come down and make a big play on the top. But that was just one of those times as a quarterback, you like to follow through and finish the throw. But I got my arm hit, so I couldn't bring the ball down. So uh, uh, Brian Gamble is wide open, but I can't follow through with it. And instead of snapping the ball down and dropping it to his lap, 
I almost threw it into the first row. So, you know, <laughs> on TV it looks terrible, but you know, but I there's knew, a, I knew what but, would really happen. And there, and there, you were signaling it. I'm gonna go back to that because I think that's instructive. You were pointing to the. Who are you talking to? Your offensive coordinator, your head coach? Because you're pointing at your right arm, saying, "I got hit there." Whoever was looking and thinking, like, Juice, what the heck? Uh, <laughs> that was my arm. <laughs> but definitely, it's, it, that should've, that's a throw I should have made, for sure. All right, so second down and 10. This is the opening drive of the game. Illinois playing for what, at the time, you didn't really know was a Rose Bowl opportunity. You knew you'd beaten Ohio State, but a lot had to happen for you to get that Rose Bowl, didn't it? Yeah, so... The, we knew we were going to a bowl, but we just really we didn't really care where. We were just so excited to get to a bowl. So we heard a lot of whistles at Capital One. I think they had representation at the game. Yep. But it was more or less just take care of business, the bowl game, but it'll happen when it, you know, the way it should fall. So so obviously it worked out whatever, you know, the domino effect at the end of the season and Ohio State ended up going back to the, getting back into the national championship. And uh us going to the Rose Bowls, I mean it was it almost felt like it was meant to be the way it all happened at the end of the season. See Richard Mendenhall here with the catch in the flat, taking it down for a first and goal. You talk about having some weapons. You obviously were a weapon. Not bad to have a guy like Mendenhall in the backfield to carry the ball as well. Made life easy. Um, <laughs> very, 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 very quickly, whenever I got too much attention, I would just hand it off and give it to him and let him do his thing. So uh, I was more, you know, his supporting cast more than anything. I mean, he was the main, he was the featured guy. So as much as I can help him out, then I try to do that. Now, this is an option play, and this option results in a touchdown. We've talked option football a lot on BTN, and any of us who are football fans who have grown up in the era of option football have certainly seen a lot of it. What are you looking for as you run this option here and you get the pitch outside to Rashard Mendenhall? What's the best thing that you can see? What are you looking for on this play? Yeah, so this is a, a power lead option. So basically, I'm reading one guy, and that's a defensive end as he attacks me. The, one, the moment he turns his shoulders and square his body towards me, he can't make that play on the outside. So, right, so whether he needs to, you know, come and actually tackle me, the fact that he turns his shoulders, like from physically, he can't get out and make that play. That's all I'm looking at. Everything else is sort of on, you know, the rest of the blocking scheme. How much time do you and Richard spend, did you guys spend working on option plays during practice how much of that was a part of your normal everyday practice week a lot we so we would carve right anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes just doing handoff exchanges for me giving it to him for me pulling it out for me uh doing doing pitches to him left hand right hand 10 to 15 minutes daily because very easily as you get successful as Rashad having all season you want the ball so at times where it's a it, there's a read for me to take pull the ball out and run it myself Sometimes you would squeeze it because you would want to. So, and that takes a lot of practice. When the times I should give it, or I want to run the ball and I should get a ball off, um, it's a lot of exchange and it's a lot of communication within that split second. All right. So, All right, so if we don't practice that, that ball can end up on the ground pretty easy. Seven nothing start for Illinois. Second offensive possession begins inside your own twenty. Field position was not kind to the Illini on this day, but you guys were able to make a lot of hay with some pretty bad field position. And again, you start off on the ground with Richard Mendenhall. Yeah, so we were – that season, we, I mean, I was still developing as a passer. So – and then, you know, having that, that talent back there, I mean, Mendel Hall was a monster. So, uh, Mike Watts, he wanted to get a ball to Rashad as much as he could. Uh, now, crazy enough, Northwestern did a good job of, you know, having this number in the first half. Um, so, that's what led to, you know, me being able to pick up 10, 12, 8, um, 14 yards at a time because they, you know, left openness for me. Here's an opening right here, dropping back to throw on a third down and using your wheels. Already the third rushing first down, and you've only played one series and three plays of a second. For, for Juice Williams, obviously a very good start on the ground. Here's Richard Mendenhall then weaving through traffic to get another first down. And we're about to see one of many plays on this day for Jeff Cumberland. This was sort of a Jeff Cumberland coming out party in a lot of ways. You guys knew about him. You knew what he could do. But the rest of the country got their first real look at his talent on this day, didn't they? Yep. Uh, so Jeff was a special guy, man. Uh, Sam Gold right there. So Jeff, and I tell people this all the time, Jeff is by far the most athletic person I've ever played with, by far. Right, from track to football to basketball to boxing, right? This dude was an amazing talent. 
So that was one of the situations. We knew he was big, we knew he was fast. It was just a matter of him just really catching the ball as a wide receiver versus being a tight end. It's a different sort of trajectory. So once he figured it out, I mean, the sky was the limit for him. So it was just like, when this play came, we knew verticals was coming. I'm throwing the ball to Jeff just to give him a shot. And that's got to that's got to be a comfort as a quarterback when you've got a guy that size who can create that kind of space and go up and get a ball like he can do in, in that in that space that he creates. Yeah, no, no question. I mean, and it's and it's it is more or less like yes, you want to complete the you want to complete that pass, but in the back of your head is like, what's the worst thing gonna happen? Incomplete because he's not gonna let this ball get intercepted. So so it gives you that peace of mind. It's like he's either gonna catch it or it's gonna be incomplete and just let him play the next down. And remember, this drive started inside the 20-yard line, so now it's first down and goal inside the nine. That low snap, you made something out of it. And with the flag down, ball inside the four-yard line after that flag. Yeah. Reese is a special guy, too, so <laughs> not a small receiver either. So he's more like a running back built and performed like a wide receiver. So 6'2", you know, 225, strong, fast. I was lucky, man. I had a lot of weapons that season. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. All right, so here, first down and goal. Down inside the two-yard line. You're looking for that. Now, the lean looked like you got it. I mean, on first glance, they mark you short, but it looks like with that lunge, you got the first down or the touchdown. Did you think you'd scored there? Uh, I thought I did, but you see that elbow drop. So uh, that was definitely the right call for sure. And they went back and looked at it, and they said, yep, yeah, the elbow's down, juice is short, we get to look in and again. So coming up now on second down and goal, you're inside the one-yard line. And what's about to happen, I got to believe, is one of the worst feelings for any quarterback when you're down on the one-yard line and this occurs. Now, tell me – what the oh, feeling sad. is oh, as a man. quarterback right there when that ball slips through and hits the turf at the one-yard line. Your heart drops, right? I mean, that can change the game significantly. We, we lose that fumble. I mean, who knows what happened the rest, of the, the rest of that day. So, I mean, that's the last thing you want to think about. You have the inch yard line, and you just want to cross, and you fumble the ball, especially when you, especially when you should have scored the play before, and then you fumble it the next play, you really feel like crap. So – Thank God I got that ball back because Zick would have landed to me if I'd have came off to the sideline at the fumble. <laughs> He's, he was already preparing for it. They cut yeah, to the sideline just face. to see like, He was ready to, to put it on me. If I if we if we didn't turn that football over, I might have got subbed. It might have took me out and put Eddie in there. <laughs> so, so thank God we got that back. So now third and goal, you get the opportunity again. This time you hang on to the ball like it's something you can't lose again, and you get into the end zone for the touchdown. That's two possessions and two impressive marches for a score. And you got some great push on that quarterback sneak from your offensive line. Now we had some good guys up, uh, up front, good feet, good technique, uh, good power. So, I mean, and we did it the week before, fourth and one, obviously, at Ohio State. So it was like, no brain, let's go. Let's go sneak and uh, get it done. All right, so back to work again now. Third offensive possession, starting at the 12-24 mark. And again, I mentioned field position was no friend to the yeah. Illini on this day. You're throwing out of your own end zone. I, I, explain the thought process for Coach Locks as he, the, Mike Loxley, now the head coach at Maryland, was your offensive coordinator, calling a play where you're throwing out of your own end zone. Yeah, so anytime you back up like that, the goal is to always get, get two first downs, flip the field position. But it's not necessarily score. Of course, that's awesome you want to do. But uh, if we've been really strategic, get two first downs, get the ball back on the other side of 50, all right, and then we play for the next possession if possible. But – you know, this particular game, you know, it's first down, not the first, not the first down. Now you're looking to score. So, um, you know, that, that easy shift, the, mind shift, the mindset really uh, quickly uh, it, it changed after a couple first downs for us. So, you'll see that in a minute. Yep, and there's the first of the first downs. Richard with the little plunge up the middle to get a couple of yards. Already a 14 nothing lead. And as you mentioned, the Capital One Bowl was the, the bowl that everybody thought Illinois was going to go to. And then Missouri and West Virginia would lose on their final weekend of the regular season. That propelled the team you beat, Ohio State, back into the top spot in the mm -hmm. BCS rankings. Remember, this is old BCS days. And right, so all of a right. sudden, here comes Illinois going to the Rose Bowl as a result of the win against Ohio State, this game, and then a lot of upheaval in what was really a season of chaos in 2007. 
Yeah. Now, like you said, I mean, I don't think anyone could have predicted that domino falling the way it did. So um, for Ohio State to lose, for Oregon to lose, for West Virginia to lose, and then ultimately the Buckeyes getting back to the national championship, I mean, it just worked out per perfectly for us to end up in passing data. Now, this is sort of a uh, hammer drive right now. You guys are just pounding the football on yeah. the ground with Richard, a little running by you to get out of the shadow of your own end zone. You're now out to the 25 with a first and 10. About three minutes have gone by so far in this drive from when you started inside the five. A little play action. And this is, this is impressive. I mean, you look at a scramble <laughs> for a first down. This is a man running for his life. But what do you explain? How do you see this? Little stop, um, little go. Is it instinct? What are you looking for? It's instinct. It's not a, not a lot of vision, to be honest. Uh, you just see colors, and you go opposite those colors, to be frank with you. Now, the impressive piece, you see like a side cut that I make. Like, that is just, you know, a lot of footwork drills. There's a lot of God-gifted talent. Like, it's hard to even explain that. But that's just, you know, one of the things that I was blessed to have a part of my game to get out of situations like that. Here's that side cut right there. Right there, like – it's, it can't, not everybody can do that, right? And obviously, that cut makes you know makes up. I'm able to go out there and get a first down on that. So, uh, some good I think blocking by the way as well. But you know, I, I don't. I can't even do that today. <laughs> like that, those <laughs> days are done, right? <laughs> hey, Juice, you could do it. You could do it one time, and then the Achilles would say no more. <laughs> and, you know, I think a snap, knee, Achilles, <laughs> everything would still be on the field. <laughs> you could certainly do it on this day, though. In 2007, when Illinois with a 14 nothing lead, going to work again and going to work again with the feet. Now, this is a power run. I don't care if it's a quarterback, a running back, a wide receiver. That's pure power. Did people underestimate your power as a runner when they looked at your shiftiness? I think so. Um, and a combination of under, like being underestimated as a quarterback. And two, just really me dedicated some time in the weight room that all the all season before. So being in the big team, you hear the stories about it being a physical conference. So I wanted to do everything I could to prepare myself for those for the contact. So in this particular drive, like you said, we backed up at the three yard line. I had run after run after run. They were really keying in on Richard. So our part of our run game is be live, be active, be ready to make a play. And after a while, um, the fatigue starts to set in a bit. So we started to get a few negative plays. I think I even fumbled later on in the drive. Yep. Pure fatigue. Like it was nothing else but me just being tired. And so and you got to be prepared for that. The broadcasters that day, Dave Pash and Andre, were up in the booth. And I think they both mentioned, looked like Juice is getting a little bit tired there. But not on oh, that man. throw. A dart over the middle <laughs> for several players to get the first down. You had good protection. And Michael Holm and Awanui was right there to make the catch. And, yes, I have practiced his name many times as he played a good long time <laughs> in the NFL. Hey, look, uh-oh. That's, that's where I go to. I don't even try to mess up his last name. Uh-oh. That's my guy. <laughs> we'll, watch this, we'll watch this one again, finding your tight end. Yeah. Nothing fancy about this but a good, strong throw. Yeah. So, yeah, on that particular play, you, you keep the mic. The mic steps up for that crossing route. You throw it behind him if he vacates or uh, anything. Actually, you, you want to take a shot at the, at the tight end. So, uh, that uh-oh, he really lived and made uh, a lot of plays throughout his career on that route itself. He caught a lot of passes over him with a big, strong guy. So, he wasn't afraid of that contact at all. Taking almost over five minutes now off the clock on this drive, continuing to march. Again, it started at the three-yard line. And continuing to just push your way – down the field in the midst of a drive like this juice are you sensing you talked about your fatigue you got a sense the defense is getting tired as well um you sense it a bit but i'm more concerned about myself being tired and not making a mistake because that's a lot of times that's when mistakes happen you know it's um um and you see it wow another first down uh yeah so you start to make bad plays because you're so so concerned about being tired and breathing and trying to get a break and looking for a simple toss where it's not his own read or, or screen pass where you can catch your breath. That's when the mistakes are happening. So um, from time to time, I'll peek over and look at, you know, a linebacker taking some deep extra breaths or look at the corner trying to, you know, trying to uh, find a way to take a playoff. But for the most part, you know, you try to, you know, keep locked in and make sure you don't make a mistake. Let's go back to this, this scramble. This is a third down and 10 play. This is your seventh 
rushing first down of the first half. And, and, and as you watch it the first time, you even gave a wow. You're impressed with this play. Why? Yes, yeah, so it's just – I thought. I mean, you looking at it as a fan, it's like somebody key in on this dude. Somehow, <laughs> I mean, you get these six first downs coming up on the seven. Like, it, spy him. Do something, right? But it was still – you know, that's a testament to the play call and the block and the execution. And that was a draw, 100%. So, that was not a pass at all. That was a design draw. So, third and long was, you know, quarterback draw for us, and it was successful all season. So, these these folks on the screen were very excited about what you were doing yeah. out there that Mom day. Mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing, though, with my, especially with my mom. My mom, to this day, anytime she sees anything on Big Ten Network, especially Ohio State, she watches those games as if, like, it's the first time. Like, she, she's yelling at the screen, she's talking, she's, like, she's praying, like, come on, son, you got it. And, like, Mom, you know this happened, like, you know, 13 years ago. So, you know the outcome. So, that's tough. I always mess with her about that. Well, the good thing about praying about those things is you know your prayer is going to be answered on that. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So, after this run, I'm, I was done, Kevin. Like, like, dude, sell me out. We can kick a field goal right now. I was <laughs> done. Like, I was so tired on this drive. Like, I'm pretty sure I fumbled the ball on this drive at some point. Well, this was almost a seven-minute drive at this point. Oh, there and there's is. the fumble that you talk about right there. Yeah, pure, pure fatigue. And it was like, please tackle me now. I'm tired of running. Were you looking to pitch there? Was there a thought of getting it out on the edge? Nah, so so on, on certain sort of pitch reads, there's a rule. If it's two people outside, no matter what, you keep it, right? So if you see it's another guy that's going to pop up on the outside where Rashard was, there that guy it. there, I saw him out there. There's no reason to pitch that ball. So you take it. I, I should have just went down and started pitch instead of making a play, but that's just one of the rules. And now you go with a little end around, and here's yeah, Jeff man, Cumberland again. Showing some speed to match that size. He's a long strider, Juice. Yeah, so Jeff was one of the fastest on the team, too. Uh, straight line, I mean, it's, you, you, I mean, he can run with anybody uh, on our team that season. So and it was important for us to get him the ball out in space. Like, we wanted him to, to have an opportunity to get the ball out of space. Now, I mess with Jeff all the time because he just made a cut right there and scored. But that's him being in the open space that time. He was, he was a tight end pretty much his entire career up until that game. So... I mean, you give, him, you give him a little credit for still doing a good job. It really has been down near the yard line. He thought he was in, just yeah, short of the touchdown. Got to we got to punch that in. I'm going to text him when we get off. We got to punch that in, Regis. <laughs> but it gave you a chance to get another touchdown run. 16-play, 97-yard drive capped by that touchdown. <laughs> oh, and my, my everybody. <laughs> Everybody excited about that over there. Now we talked about it. Go ahead. Who, who are we looking at here? So that's my that's my oldest daughter, Lachey. So she'll get a kick out of seeing that uh, Ben because she made. She, I think she was three months. So she was born September third, oh seven. So she was three months at the time. So she'll get a kick out of that. Uh, and that's their entire family just being, you know, a, a pack of Williamses, loud, fun, entertaining. So <laughs> that particular play, you talk about fatigue. In a normal sort of situation, I'll, I'll run up to the corner. No contact, just walk in. Me, a combination of me being tired, and then also number 17, he had a couple. He was talking a little bit throughout the game. So in that first half, he said a couple words to Rashad. I think he actually hit Rashad late on one of those plays. He got flagged for it. And, and I noticed that combination of me being tired and seeing number 17 creep over, I just wanted to make contact. So uh, now I didn't think it was going to go the way it happened because I hear he, – I think he – I think he was hurt. He was out for the rest of the game or something like that. But, but, uh, but yeah, that was one of those plays. I kind of grit your teeth and you just go get it done, right? And that's just, you know, Big Ten football. You know, it's your rival. You know, yep. you bang his with him. You want to put him down. And, uh, you know, I mean, that worked out. So you sought out the contact to end the touchdown run. We talked about it during the drive, Juice. 97-yard drive, go up 21 nothing. You had the sense that there was a little bit of – they were a little bit in trouble right then, and they had to feel it as well. Yeah. Um, as an as a, as a offense, right, you want to see performance like that. Of course, you want the, the big – you want the highlight plays. You want to be able to score, you know, you know, you know, two or three plays, right? 
But when you can like really pound somebody out like that, you really know for the rest of the game, they don't have a shot. Right, it's really, it, to us, you feel like there's nothing they really can do that can stop us from running the ball, to throwing it, to screens, to third and long. It's not much they can do to stop. You want that. So after that drive, as you mentioned, like we knew they were in trouble for sure. So we go on to the second half now, up 21-7 at halftime. Illinois about to get the football to start this second half. And for the first time today, it seems like decent field position to start a drive. Probably, At least right. you're not starting inside the 10 yard line. You're starting out right. near the 25. And yeah, past the 20 finally. Yeah, exactly. And you guys go to the air very early in this drive. They'll run to Richard to start things off. And then on this second down play, you go up top and it's another Jeff Cumberland play. Yeah. Walk me through what happens here. Yeah, so another, we've been setting this up all game. All right, and, and the only way you can really stop the triple uh, the triple option, you got to bring them safeties down, right? And we've been staging that. We worked on it all, all week. Now, all week, I didn't throw a pass like that. Like, the ball was, you know, it definitely led him to the end zone. But if you, if you see here, I couldn't really step into this throw. Now, somehow, somehow, some way, I, whether it's me taking an extra step back sideways, I need to fire the ball and swing and walk into the end zone. So that was part of the progression, me getting better as a passer. At this season, this particular season, my feet, my footwork had to be perfect, right? And on each play to go in order to make those throws. As I got older, but as me running sideways on a run, falling backwards, I was maybe I was able to make much more accurate throws moving forward. But that year I was still developing as a passer. Yeah, just a sophomore on this Illinois team, loaded with talent, obviously, as Richard Mendenhall gets stopped for basically no gain. And we called it earlier the Cumberland coming out party. This play coming up. I think is the play that most Illinois fans will think of during this game because this is just a remarkable grab. Good throw, yeah. but even a better catch. Look, man. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we we all have seen like Jeff do crazy stuff. Like, like Jeff. That speaks to how athletic he was because I remember in the off season, particularly in the summer, we'll go over to the basketball rec center. Jeff would catch dunks like that all the time. Like, he would catch one left-handed dunks, just go up and, you know, slam it. It's the same thing. He just took his athletic ability that he had in track and in basketball and all these other sports that he was good at. He brought that over to the football field. That's hard to stop, man. He's 6'6", 260, running a 4'4", 4'3". There's not much you can do with that. One, two, three guys had a shot at him before he got into the end zone, makes the catch, now, you did a good job of putting that ball where only Jeff Cumberland yeah. had a chance to get that. I mean, he yeah. had to make a nice catch to snare it with the yeah. one hand. Not the most if, accurate when he's that wide open. Uh, yeah. But, again, he, he made up for it. I mean, just being athletic. So, and he's, Jeff is one of the dudes where you want to put it in his hand, get it, get it to him in stride. He made plays like that, right? So, at that stage, he was still developing, catching it, you know, star-stop plays, things like that. But if you hit him in stride, I mean, he'll go. Right, so that's, you know, obviously hitting them, you know, coming up short on a few plays before that, I want to make sure I put it out in front, and um, you saw the results of that. So now, stop me if you've heard this before, Illinois starts a drive inside the 10-yard line. <laughs> now at the 6-yard line, up 28-7, you start the next possession as your defense got the hold they needed, and you go back to work on the ground, and you start to really chip away at this yeah. Northwestern defense now. Up three touchdowns pounding away, this yeah. team could do a lot of different things, couldn't they, including line up in the eye like this and just run it down somebody's throat. Yeah. No, we had a lot of versatility this season. We, we was known for the spread offense, but we can do – we can go eye formation, uh, come out, pound you out. We had the guys up front to, you know, really make movement up uh, on the defensive lineman. So, uh, it was no shortage. Loxley did a great job, man. I, you know, I don't think I don't think we all really knew what type of brain he had. Obviously, we've seen it, him develop it and him being over in Alabama and having the success. But um, he had a great brain for understanding defenses and how to beat it, right? And we were just able to go out there and execute it. How much of what you ran at Illinois have you seen in what Coach Loxley's called at Alabama and maybe even in his first year at Maryland? It's a lot of the same stuff. I mean, obviously, he's added a couple wrinkles. Um, with the RPO, RPO stuff, um, a few extra tags to it, but at its core, it looks very similar, right? Formations are off. You add a, you add a, you add a motion here and there. 
but in large parts, a lot of the same reads, you're still keying the linebacker or the defensive end or the safeties. Um, it's a lot of the same stuff, and it works. And we're seeing this Illinois team do to Northwestern what you guys were able to do in this game all day long. Just really – Search your will on this team on the option here. You get the first down, another rushing first down for you on the option play. When you're looking on that edge as an option quarterback on that play, looking to pitch, looking not to pitch, what factors into the decision here? Yeah, so I'm looking for the safety to come down. Um, and you see his momentum running outside. So you get a, you, you know, you take what you can get. You want four yards or more on this run. And then you obviously want to finish strong. So uh, uh, BG, you got to catch that. Um, and I spent a lot of time with our strength coach, Lou Hernandez, who's back in Champaign now. And you talk about falling forward, being physical. I mean, he has a lot to do with that development. You know, I came in on campus like 205 maybe. I think I played this game in like 225. Wow. And still been able to run. How difficult was it to adjust to playing at that difference in weight from when you came into where you are even as a sophomore now yeah so anybody will remember as a freshman you, i mean you get hit a lot you get beat up quite a bit you get the yeah. h you get the you get the bruise that's because your body is not accustomed to that level of like impact you play with grown men you go from high school to playing with bearded men right so and that <laughs> and that changed those hits are a shock to the body so i spent a lot of time in the weight room to make sure if i'm going to run the football i need to be prepared right so and that was the approach for everybody. You know, if the quarterback is getting, he's getting jack, he's getting strong. If I'm a running back, I need to be just as big, just as strong. If I'm a wide receiver, I need to be just as physical because we got to go out there and block and uh, make plays after the after the catch. So, so that was the mentality for everybody. No, I want to go back to this play because you, it's a simple handoff, not a lot there. Mendenhall gets a big play, but you're stacking plays on this drive and you're using similar formations, similar motions in the backfield. Here you show that maybe you're going to fake and take it to the outside, but instead you stick it in the belly of Mendenhall, and he runs it up the middle. On this very next play, you utilize the fake. Everybody crashes on Richard Mendenhall, and you're able to get yardage as a result of that. How much yeah. of that is you're just stacking one play on top of the next? Yeah, so the idea is to make every play look the same. So Rashad is maybe able to get a few extra yards by me carrying out the fake. Because, it, because if I'm still a threat, that back safety, he doesn't know if I have it, he doesn't know if Rashad has it. So a lot of times, if we can get him to freeze, that might allow either for him to break the additional tackle or take it a distance, right? Now, if he doesn't react or he stays in a box or he chases the running back, the next play, I get a chance to pull it out and uh, go out there and get some yards myself. So, like I said, it was it – was, the scheme we had was genius. I think uh, Loxie did an amazing job of just not only having the playbook that makes sense, but being able to articulate that, uh, the responsibilities and the goals within each play. That's where ultimately made it work. And you guys continuing to just march again. This is the same drive that started at the six-yard line. Already had a drive in this game that went 97 yards. This one about to go 94 as Richard gets the edge, and Mendenhall takes it in for the touchdown. 14-play, 94-yard drive, and you're about to win your rivalry game at this point. Everybody has to know it by now. Up 34-7, yeah. soon to be 35-7. Yeah, that was that was kind of like the final blow. We knew we knew it was pretty much. I mean, we you would never say it out loud, but we knew it was over after that score. So it was just a matter of not making any any mistakes. So 35-14 is Northwestern had scored a touchdown, but. For you and for this Illinois team, it's all about now running clock, getting to the end of the game, and, and really just trying to get to the point where you get to celebrate the bowl berth that you know you have. And as you find out a week later, you're going to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, at this point, especially offensively, we've had, you know, 500 yards of total <laughs> offense. So it's like we all are kind of gassed, burnt out. So it's like let's, let's run some clock. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here healthy. Um, let's, let's go celebrate. You know, it's the last game of the season for us, so we was all thinking about Thanksgiving. Uh, my birthday, I think, was the next day, right? So uh, so we was all trying to get out of there and get out of there with a win. So, um, but all around, and I, and, I, and I don't know if I mentioned, but that was pretty cool to see uh, Rashard break the record, yep. um, to be a part of, be on the field with him, and him to celebrate that moment. Like, that was pretty pretty amazing for him to have one of his life pillars take place on that field. So that was that was really awesome to be a part of that. 
single season rushing leader with this game and that touchdown that he had kind of put him over the top for that record in Illinois. And Illinois getting a penalty there in the defense. Jeff Cumberland attempt there. He was interfered with and Richard Mendenhall would just continue to grind away using his power. He was such an interesting back to watch because he did have that combination of power and speed that you saw throughout his career in an Illinois yeah. uniform. Yeah, no. So, I mean, you look at him, you, you just you look at him as a thunderback, right? Yep. But you get him a lane, he's gone, right? So, I mean, he's e- easily one of the top two or three, um, you know, uh, you know, sprinters on our team. And most people didn't notice that until he got on the field on Saturday, right? You couldn't catch him, right? So he can pound you out between the tackles, but you get him on the edge, like he can go. So he's a special talent, man. It's a special talent. Well, there speaking was a of which, of- guy coming to backfield now, Brian Gamble, was another special. It's a freshman. Him and Long Road really has been. Those dudes made plays, man. Uh, I really wish I had more time with, with BG. Um, you know, I think uh, that was his first and only season at Illinois, uh, you know, transferring after that. But talk about special talent, man. We had it all over the place. And he was young. He very much so could have had come, went on to have a great Illinois career as well. Uh, Definitely missed him later in my career for sure. How tired are you at this point of the game? I'm gas. It's over. The tank is empty. <laughs> I'm just out there. I'm just moving my legs at this point, looking for a place to fall. So. <laughs> You think you were ahead of your time as a quarterback, Juice? I think so. Um, and I, and I, I have no regrets or no ill feelings about how everything sort of panned out after college. But I definitely think I was a little bit ahead. So you see now, you see Russell Wilson, you see Lamar Jackson. Um, you know, you see, you see all these, uh, you see Cam, you see all these top-notch quarterbacks that have a very similar game that I had uh, back in, you know, back in these years. All right, let me pause real quick. Yep. That play. Yep. So Dewan Warren, I one of my one of my better friends right now. Uh, he we will never forget this play. Out of all the successful plays I've had, this missed throw, he will never let this die because this would have been this should have been a walk in touchdown. This is senior day for him, his last home game. I gotta hit that. I, I gotta throw that and let him walk in and celebrate with the family. That is terrible. <laughs> That's no excuse. There's no one hitting my arm. There's no follow through. There's no foot traffic. I got to make a good throw on that. So any chance he get, he, he reminds me, I'll never forget this play because, you know, that was an opportunity for him to score on the scene today. Yeah. So, and he reminds you of it as well, huh? All the time. Like, even like, we'll, like it's been, we, we've definitely gone down to play flag football in the leagues, like in Chicago and all that. We always say, Juice, you remember that play, no question? Always. So, <laughs> and I, yeah, he, he, as you should, like, that was, that, that was, that should have been a layup for me. Uh, but and, back to, as I, yeah, that's all I was saying, it's just about being before my time. I think, uh, you know, definitely, you know, you see the mobile quarterbacks today really be successful and people, teams, leagues really embrace that style of play. And, and, and the second thought, though, it's pretty cool to be a part of that transition of the game. Right to see myself, to see Pat White, to see Troy Smith, really start to uh, break open, crack through a different style of play for the quarterback position. It's pretty cool to be a part of to say you had a hand in, started to change the mindset about that position. So myself, along with the other few guys that came before me, the Donovan McNabb's, the Randall Cunningham's, the Mike Vicks, um, to be you know the college version to start to introduce that. Not to say nowhere near on par with them, but just to be a version of this new style of play. Uh, it's pretty humbling to be a part of that. So, Juice, you win this game, obviously. You move on to the Rose Bowl. Things don't go the way you want in the Rose Bowl, but this is a season that Illinois fans remember to this day. I know those of you that were on the team remember it. What stood out 13 years later? What stood out most to you, not about this Northwestern game, but about that season and that team as a whole? Yeah, it was, it was, you know, the interesting thing was that season started in, in Camp Rent, too. And, and it took guys, Jay Lehman, it took Rashard in the hall, it took, um, you know, Martin O'Donnell, those guys, the leaders on the team, to really buckle down and say, hey, look, we came close a bunch of games last year. We need to, we need to take the next step. We need to go out there and, and, and win these games. You know, we were losing by four points, by seven points. And I'm a true freshman. Uh, 
we knew we had the talent to to go out there and do it. So it was pretty cool for us to, for, to look back and see us create that mindset in camp. And each week we go out there and execute that. All right, each week we go out there with a mission and we were getting it done. All right, so of course all of the wins and the successful plays on the field, but what really stands out is the brotherhood, the camaraderie that we had in that locker room throughout the season. And to see us go out there and set a goal, um, not think Rose Bowl, but uh, to see it unfold the way it did, like that was a pretty special moment. So um, super cool to be a part of that, man. I still have, you know, flashbacks to this day. It's like, wow, you know, it's still, it's still hard to believe that that's me out there, part of that group. Beat the number one team in the land, beat your rival, go to the Rose Bowl for the first time since 1984. Pretty successful end to your sophomore season with Illinois. Juice, this has been fun. Thanks for spending some time to, to rewatch this one and give us some, uh, give us some stories from that Northwestern. It was a lot of fun. No, nah, this is definitely good to uh, reminisce. Uh, bring back a ton of memories. So uh, no, I'm super excited to do this. Always fun to, to get a chance to, re to relive and uh, see me back when I was in shape. <laughs> so that's always good to, to know that body used to exist. Uh, but, to, you know, to recap that, that season and see all the talent, um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a blessing to be a part of that. Now for Juice Williams, I'm Kevin Kugler. Thanks for watching our Big Ten Video Recall.